All right, so in the other video, we talked about um, translating RPN, reverse pulse notation, into infix, or at least not, at least performing something with reverse Polish notation. So again, the idea would be if I had three, five, plus two, oh, that was supposed to be a plus, three, five, plus two times, then that would be three plus five is eight, and then two times would be eight times two is 16. So assuming that you know what that is, then we can go forward. If you haven't done that before, then you need to go review that before you can do um, infix to RPN. So let's just start out with kind of a, a more straightforward example. I don't really have a strategy except to tell you just kind of got to get it and get a feel for it. And once you do, you'll never forget it. It's really fun. So you kind of look at this. Now what you do is you're going to write, I guess I can give a little bit of a strategy. You're going to kind of write the numbers in order that you see them. You're not going to change the order of the numbers. So you have eight, four, eight, and three. And as you're putting them in, um, think, okay, so this is a four. Is there anything I can do with this four right now? No, I'd have to do the eight minus three first. Okay. So then I'm going to put in the eight. Can I do anything with the eight? Uh, well, I'd have to subtract it from three. I don't have the three yet. Okay. So I do the three. Is there anything I can do with the three? Well, yeah, I would need to subtract it from the eight. Awesome. I want to subtract it from the eight. Awesome. Um, and so you kind of in your mind have this idea of like, okay, I have this eight minus three going on. And then just keep writing, um, or is there anything I can do with this now that I have it? And you can say, well, actually, now that I have that, no, I can't. I was going to say I could add it to the 4, but I can't. I have to actually square it. So I need to put in a 2, and then the squarey term. And then once I've squared it, then I can add it back to the 4, so I put a plus sign there. Okay, I don't know if that helps, but I'm going to try explaining it again. Um, so, so that's one way that I guess you can read it. Um, if you want, actually, you can put all of the terms. No, you can't put all the terms at the end. So I got the 4, can't do anything with the 4. 8, can't do anything with the 8. If I subtract the 3 from it, I can. So, okay, so I go 8, and then the 3 minus, that takes care of the thing inside the parentheses. Um, then I need to square it, okay? So 2 squared, and then I need to add it to the previous 4. The only thing you have to keep yourself from doing is, like, trying to go back in time and um, write... Um, characters. Everything always has to be written going forward. And as long as you just start writing forward, all these little terms should eventually show up. The only thing you don't write is parentheses. Um, and there's like a formal, um, what do you call it, algorithm for converting. But if you're just trying to do it in your head, um, I almost feel like just practicing is a little bit better. So when I'm looking at this, okay, I can't do any four, the eight minus three, that I can do, then I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to add it to the four. So that's kind of how how something like that would work. So let's see if I can just find some more to play with. Alrighty, so let's try this one. So again, the, the rule is you're always wanting to work from left to right. So I start with the five, I have to write the five first, then I have to write the two. Now the question is, can I do anything with these? No, because I still need the seven. I have to add the seven and the two together, but once I add the seven and the two together, then I can and should raise that to the five to that power, okay? So I can kind of mentally check this off. I've kind of taken care of everything that's going on here. All right, now I see a multiplication, can't do anything with that, so I start writing the four. Okay, so I write the four and the one that need to be added together. Okay, so now I've added the four and the one together, and now that I've added them together, I look at um, order of operations and I see well, I need to go ahead and multiply that by the 5 before I do anything with the square root of 3. So I need to, or by the 5 to the 9th. So I need to go ahead and multiply that out. And then um, now I've taken care of that. So this here has kind of taken care of this. Um, this here has kind of taken care of this. And then, all right, I've got a 3. And I need to take the square root of it. And then I need to add it to the previous thing that I did. So that's what this here is taken care of. Okay, now again, it's really important the order in which you do this. Occasionally you can say that there's more than one answer, um, but it's, it's a little tricky. I mean, it is theoretically possible to do things in a different order, you know, just like I could put the plus four over here and get the same thing. Um, but in general, you know, you just, you just have to know that you might look at someone else and they did something slightly different than what you did and got the same answer and that's okay. But if you're trying to be like super hardcore about doing it quote unquote right, then this is how you do it. Okay, so again, I'm just going to run through this one more time. So I start with the 5, and then I give you the 2 and the 7, 
The 2 and the 7 has to be the 9. That has to happen first. And then I raise that from the, from the fifth power to that. Mm -hmm. All right, now looking ahead, I've got a multiplication, but I can't do anything yet. I do 4 and 1, add them together, times it to the, from the previous thing. Take the 3, square root it, and plus it from the previous. All right, so try this one. This one's a little crazy, um, but if you can get this one, you're probably in pretty good shape. Um, and again, for like the sign, like you can just assume that if you had sine of one, then you would just say one and then hit the sign button. Okay, kind of like that. All right, so let that sit. So pause the video, try and see if you can get that worked out. And we'll assume you did that. So again, I'm gonna start writing numbers going from left to right. So two and two, so I'm gonna square those. All right, then I have three and a four, which I need to multiply and add it to the previous value. Then I'm gonna put in a one and also add it to the pretty previous value. I was gonna say the previous value. And then I take the sign, I hit the sign button. I sign all of that. All right, then I'm gonna put a five and then I'm gonna put in the six, take the square root of it, add it to the previous five, take the square root of that sum and then add it to the previous value. Yikes, this is fun. And then I'm gonna put in a seven and an eight and then a nine the, nine, the 8 gets raised to the 9 power, and then the 10, I'm going to multiply it by the 8 to the 9, and then I'm going to raise all that to the 7, and then add it back to the previous term. So if that wasn't fun, I don't know what is. All right, I'm going to try this again and just see if I get the same answer, because I always look at this and go, because you can't just look at it and tell what it's doing very well. I mean, maybe you can, because y'all are like brilliant and stuff, but I'm just a humble nerd doing stuff for funsies. All right, so looking at this again. All right, whoa, come back, come back, come back, come back. All right, so I have two, and then the two, and then I'm gonna square it. Then I have a three and a four, and I multiply them together, add them to the two. Then I have a one, add it to the previous thing, take the sign of it. Then I have a five, then I have a six. I gotta square root the six and then add it to the five, then take the square root of the whole thing. Then I have a seven, then I have an eight, then I have a nine, but nine gets raised from the eight, and then I'm gonna multiply it by that 10, and then I'm gonna raise it to that seven and add it to the previous term. And I believe that is exactly what I got last time, so that's a good thing, yay! So you're having all kinds of fun with these. Again, from a programming perspective, this is a lot easier to explain to a computer than the, because of the push-pop thing. And then the other thing that's kind of nice is as I'm going across, I don't have to read the whole equation, well, here, I don't have to read the whole equation to know what's going on, as I'm interpreting it, I just go, do doop done, do doop done, oh, add them together. Um, you know, I don't even have to look at any of this. I can just start, as soon as the equation starts coming in, I can start working it out, whereas if you're trying to give me this equation, I have to wait till I get the whole thing, so I can kind of do a PEMDAS analysis on it and see where I need to go. So there's no interpretation at all with RPN, and that's why we love it.